Quantum mechanics or atomic structure always brings about uh, a lot of discussion in terms of electrons and where they are and many times students even in the, at the middle school level have talked about the Bohr model of the atom and how the electrons are in orbits and how they can jump from one orbit to a higher energy orbit and fall back down releasing a photon of light. Flame tests are oftentimes an easy experiment to do uh, with that unit and the students really enjoy it. You can make connections to things like fireworks uh, and, and a variety of things that uh, really can make the subject come to life. Many teachers do flame test experiments in a variety of ways. The way that I like to use or do the experiment involves the use of nichrome wire. What I like about nichrome wire is that it is not a very good heat conductor and that the way that the students will do the experiment is I'll take, in advance of the students coming in, I'll take the spool of nichrome wire and I will cut a length of wire about this long and I'll then take a pair of pliers and I'll fold a little loop on the one end. What's amazing about this, and it always surprises the students when I demonstrate the procedure, is that I can heat this part of the wire, okay, the looped end of the wire, I can put that right in the Bunsen burner flame, and this part can get just orange hot, incredibly hot, and yet I don't feel that heat out here where my hand is. They'll say, oh my gosh, isn't that getting warm? Isn't that getting warm? And that's kind of a good question that they're asking because many times metals are very good heat conductors. That is not the case with the nichrome wire, making it perfect for flame tests. What I have here would be uh, a test tube containing a, a lithium solution, a sodium solution, copper plus two solution, uh, and a potassium solution. All of these solutions, uh, typically we use a one molar solution, but the concentration isn't that important. Well, and you'll see the amount that I have in here is more than enough. I could get by with probably 15 classes could use this amount of solution in the test tubes. Okay, let me show you the procedure. I also have here a beaker of waste or a beaker of rinse water so that that way we don't contaminate as we go from one test tube to another. All that I do is I take this nichrome wire and I insert it down into the solution like this and then I'll pull that out and carefully bring it over to the Bunsen burner flame. And so what I'm seeing would be that characteristic lithium color and we see that to be a red color. So if you could write red for our flame color for lithium. Now on the nichrome wire I still have some residual lithium ions so I'm going to rinse that in the beaker of water before I go on to the sodium and there we see the bright yellow orange color of a typical sodium flame. So a yellowish orange color or bright orange. I'll rinse it again And then it's off to the copper wire or copper test tube. And that one happened quickly. Let me run back to that. And we see the greenish color of the copper flame. to the potassium
and we see a lavender type of color for that flame. Well, this is always fun for the students. They're surprised, for instance, at, this, at the different colors of the flames, considering many of the solutions are colorless. Well, what I tell them on the first day is that they are working from left to right in their data table, that they have no idea what color lithium will be. Lithium, they discover, is red. That's great for the first day. They enjoy it. What really makes this process authentic, though, would be the next day. How will they be tested over this? Well, what I like to tell them would be this. Tomorrow, when you come back to class, thank you for that, uh, when you come back to class, I will give each of you two small test tubes containing these solutions. But I'm not going to label it as lithium or sodium or copper or potassium. It's going to be their job, based upon the flame color, to determine it. So for instance, a student may have test tube number three, and it's just labeled with a three on it. It will be their job to work from the right side back to the left side. So they will dip the wire, burn the wire. If it's green, then they'll work to the left and say it must be the copper ion. Likewise, if they dip the wire into, say, test tube number five, and it burns lavender, they would know, hey, it must be potassium. Well, this is where, as a teacher, you can really have fun with the activity. And here's the enjoyable part of this for me. Standing as I would here with these test tubes, as you can see, they will look at you and say, so tomorrow's test tubes contain these ions. Yes. And you'll have to determine which it is. If your students are like mine, they're looking like, doesn't he realize that one of the test tubes is blue? If I get a blue test tube tomorrow, do I even need to use the Bunsen burner? That would be a very good question that they might ask. Sometimes they'll even ask it. Will the copper be one of the possible ions for tomorrow? And my response is, yes, absolutely. It's, it's one of the ones that we have here, and it could certainly be. Mr. Bracken, don't, don't you understand? Yeah. Oh, yes, that does present a problem, doesn't it? That's when you pull out your unknowns. All of them are blue. All of them we have added blue food coloring to. All of them appear to be copper. The joy of bringing those out and saying, do you people think I didn't notice that? Please, oh for heaven's sake, uh, acting. And, and then you'll hear comments like somebody's having way too much fun with this activity and that's fine. Because what this does and having the students work from the right side back to the left side in that data table is what I would believe makes this process authentic. Day one is fun. Day one is about discovery. Day two is about holding the students accountable. You had fun when you dipped the wire, burned the wire. For me, in my classroom, the known test tubes 
these are still present at the lab stations. And so if somebody comes up and I give them, say, test tubes number one and number two, then they can dip the wire, burn the wire, see the color, and say, I think that is bright yellow orange, but let me double check to make sure. So there's no, hey, what did bright yellow orange look like yesterday? They can test it. But if you take a look here, we'll try one of the unknowns. I'll go into test tube number one. Oh yes. Most definitely burning red. Test tube number one must be lithium. I'll give the students three tries. Obviously they get 100% credit if they get it right on the first attempt. They get a point taken off if they get it right only on the second attempt, and two points taken off if they get it right on their third attempt. Uh, what can happen as teachers, I'm sure this is not news to you, if you turn the lights down, it's very possible that students may think they are putting the wire in test tube number one, and in reality they have put it into test tube number two, and they'll come up and they'll tell you, oh no, 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 I definitely saw a green color. They've simply switched the two test tubes. So they do need to be careful. I like to do class competitions, and so I'll say the highest percentage of perfect scores uh, throughout the day the highest percentage of perfect scores, whether it's period one, period two, period three, the class with the highest percentage of perfect scores, I'll give three points extra credit to everybody in that winning class. That creates the team type of mentality, and so they're really encouraging each other because, hey, I want extra credit, and I want to make sure if anybody needs a second pair of eyes on their unknowns, I'd be happy to help you with that, is what students will typically do. So I think it's a fun thing to do. Uh, the use of food coloring to uh, make all of the solutions blue. Um, you could also add uh, yellow to the copper uh, to make them all green or just put in a variety of colors. Uh, it certainly adds to the atmosphere on what can be kind of a very easy type of thing where the students may or may not try as hard if they're simply filling in the data table. The unknowns can make a huge difference. So I would encourage you to throw in a little bit of food coloring because it does not affect the color of the flame test flames.